morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 12:20 AM. This is SCVI, and I lead schools. I on the Valley. I'm Sarah McDaniel's here together today with Renee Marshall, and we are going to be your hosts. Uh, two months ago, while I on the Valley's usual host Matt Watson was unavailable, Renee and I filled in for him. And I think we did an all right job. So we're back. Thank you for being here with me. Sarah, I'm thrilled to be here this morning. Good morning, Santa Clarita. It is great to hear everybody or see everybody today and uh, to be together and to spend some time together this beautiful Friday morning. We have some great guests on the show. um, And I'm thrilled to be here as a co-host today. Thank you again for inviting me. And thank you, Matt, for not being able to be here today and being at a conference. I totally appreciate it, Matt Watson. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we'll send him the recording later. Um, okay, so Eye on the Valley is brought to you by SCVI and I Lead Schools. We are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've also got a fully accredited online school, a burgeoning home school, I Lead Exploration. I love hearing Matt say burgeoning every week, so I had to leave that in. We've got a terrific show for you today. Later on, we're going to hear from I Create and Little I Leaders directors Wendy Ruiz and Candice Butera. And we're going to have our usual fun with Big T and trivia. But first, we will be kicking it off with Adam Laraway from Focus Physical Therapy. Adam is the founder and owner of Focus Physical Therapy. He holds a Master's of Science in Physical Therapy from Pacific University in Oregon. And he is head therapist at Focus PT. Although his degree, credentials, and experience are standard to the industry, his treatment philosophy and patient care is not. Adam's well known for his talent, skill, in cultivating relationships, truly listening to his patients, establishing collaborative care, educating and empowering patients, achieving patient goals, and restoring patient health. Function, bil- functionability, and all abilities. Welcome, Adam. Thank you for having me. I appreciate that. All right. So I saw in your bio you grew up in the Pacific Northwest. What brought you down here to Santa Clarita? Uh, we actually came down here for my wife to go to grad school uh, out at Pepperdine, and uh, we were supposed to be here for two years and then head back to Oregon, and one thing led to another, and 21 years later, uh, we're still here. Uh, so we like we like Santa Clarita. Uh, we've been here for about 13 years, and um, really, uh, we've got two kids, and we love raising our kids here. It's, it's just a really nice community to uh, raise raise kids, and I feel a little safe here, and we've really enjoyed it. That's a common story. California tends to hold <laughs> on to people who are only going to be here temporarily. I think I said I was going to leave in 1987. <laughs> whatever whatever year I was going to graduate from high school I was going to I was going to leave that was my plan never happened yeah all righty so you've been practicing for a long time but what yeah. inspired you to go into physical therapy initially uh so I actually was a patient when I was 17 uh I was mm-hmm. a baseball player up and coming and pitching and all that type of stuff and I started having some shoulder and some elbow issues and uh so um I uh, ended up going through some physical therapy and uh, avoided surgery, and, and I really uh, enjoyed uh, uh, what, I, what I saw and, and kind of the experience. And so I actually volunteered at the clinic uh, after I was done being a patient, and then they ended up hiring me as a PT aide uh, during the summer. Um, and I kind of, that's where I started my quest. I went uh, right through graduate school. I was very fortunate, got in my first try to physical therapy school at Pacific up in uh, just outside of Portland. And, uh, yeah, I was the baby of the class and uh, off and running at 25, starting my career. Uh, started my job uh, down here at UCLA. That was my first PT uh, uh, job. And then uh, moved up to Lancaster uh, uh, after about three years uh, at UCLA uh, for my wife to uh, take a position up there. And uh, I became one of the owners of the clinic up there for 16 years. Um, but I just uh, decided that it was time to to make a change and be in my home community. And so uh, I... I left that practice and started my own. Yeah, now it says that in 2019 you took the plunge and opened your own business. So tell us a little yeah. bit about that. And I love that, Adam, because I'm actually a small business owner as well that started my business in 2019. So let's talk for a bit about what made you want to start Focus Physical Therapy. Um, so I, I I loved my clinic up in up in the Antelope Valley. Uh, it was great. We, we got to really treat patients uh, the way that they should be treated. We treated basically two patients an hour. We each had an, an aide that worked with us, so we got a lot of one-on-one care. Um, and 
when when uh, when I bought into the practice uh, in 2004, um, that that stayed the same. But but our company that the owners had retired and they sold the practice um, to a, a corporation, um, and the corporation kept growing and growing and growing. And in 2016, the the owner of the company retired. And things started to change a little bit. Um, we went from treating two patients an hour to three every 40 minutes, and there was a lot of changes that were occurring. And, and I was just didn't feel like I was given the good quality care that I've been accustomed to. Um, and that's, that's been my, my, my sole priority, you know, uh, with being a physical therapist, just trying to help people. Um, you know, they're coming to me because they're usually in pain or they're recovering from a surgery, car accident, something like that. And so I would just, you know, I'm, I'm always invested in, in trying to help them and get back to meet their goals and get back to doing what they want to do, get their life back. Um, and so I, I just wasn't able to do that anymore. And, and I also wanted to be in my home community. It was We lived in Palmdale for about five years. Uh, we actually moved down here so my wife could open up her private practice here um, for children. And uh, it just decided that it was time to make the plunge. I wanted to be able to get involved in the community, which I have been doing. I've been working with a lot of the high schools. Uh, I sponsor some of the different high schools uh, for their sports and stuff like that. And uh, it's just been a been a it's been a whirlwind. I won't lie. Uh, you know, starting a practice five months before uh, mm-hmm. COVID started uh, has been an experience. But we have been flourishing. We were actually uh, hired our second therapist and actually looking for a third therapist because we're we're helping a lot of people. So it's been it's been a great experience. Uh, I, and then I get to treat people the way they want to pe- be treated. You know, they see me every visit. Where uh, unfortunately in PT clinics that's not necessarily the case. They see the PT on the evaluation. And then a lot of times there are aides that are running them through their, their exercises. Um, and so we just do things a little differently in that sense. I love that you want to keep that quality of care and, and yeah. instead of trying to fit more people in to a limited uh-huh. number of hours that you and your other therapists have available, you're yeah. looking for more people, um, qualified Absolutely. people to do that. So if anybody is a licensed physical therapist, they might want to hit Adam up. Send yeah, your resume. we've been looking since June. <laughs> oh, well, Adam, I appreciate the consistency of care because mm-hmm. as somebody yeah. who has gone to a physical therapist, it can be confusing at times. And so to be able yeah. to check in with the same person and somebody you trust and, um, yeah. you know, quality is something we sometimes move away from in order yeah. to just expedite life. And, and to hear somebody stepping back and saying, I'm choosing quality as a business owner that yep. makes me want to bring you my business. <laughs> yep, so I appreciate absolutely. you reflecting on that because I think quality, especially coming out of the pandemic, I think we're looking at life differently. And mm-hmm. I know if I knew that I had two offices to choose from and one was seeing two patients in an hour versus three patients an hour, I know where I'd want to go because absolutely. there's nothing like leaving the doctor and having questions that weren't answered. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and it's really important too because I mean, you know, it's not, we do the initial evaluation when we when you come in, and, and I'm really trying to listen to the patient and kind of find out, you know, what it is that they're having an issue with, what what's causing the problem, and really diving into because you know they're going to see us two to three hours a week, but those other you know 165 hours is when they're doing whatever it was that caused the problem. If we don't delve into what that problem is and really listen to the person we're not going to get to the bottom of that or we're going to fix it and then it's going to come back. And, and, you know, that's, that's not what we want to do. We want to give them the tools so that we can figure out how to correct the problem. Um, and, and, and going along with that, when you come for your next visit, even though we're not doing a formal evaluation, it's still assessment. How did they respond to the last treatment? Mm-hmm. How have they been doing since the last treatment? And you have to constantly assess that. And if you're seeing an aid, they don't have the skill to do that, which is a lot of times why I think, unfortunately, people go to physical therapy and they don't necessarily get better. Um, you need that constant kind of assessment every time uh, to to make sure, hey, we're going in the right direction. If it's not, I've got lots of tools that I can utilize, but maybe the tool I used last time didn't help, so let's go a different direction. That's awesome. That's so wonderful. Yeah. So now if somebody was to come to you for help, uh, walk us through, like, what are the steps or the, what does the process look like for you to get them on the right path? Um, so initially, obviously, you call in and you talk with our front desk. They're going to take any information if people are going through insurance. Um, we do call the insurance and, and verify benefits for them, um, uh, do the best we can with what the insurance will provide. Um, and, and so we kind of give them an upfront cost, you know, and that type of stuff. Um, and then our front desk also sets up the, the appointment. We come in for an hour evaluation. You're one-on-one with the therapist uh, the entire hour. And, and an evaluation, like I said, we're really kind of delving into. I literally sit there and, and listen to what, what, they, uh, what they're telling me and, and kind of when the, when the issue started, how it started, you know, what's going on, and we start. And then I ask questions to, you know, kind of get my 
game plan of where I think we need to go based on what they're telling me. And then, and then we go through um, different tests where we either do some range of motion or some strength or there's different special tests we can test to test different structures, stuff like that, um, and, and kind of us evaluating uh, where the problem is, where the compensations are occurring. And then from there, then we, then we go uh, start treating it. And so, uh, you know, a lot of times people come out of the evaluation and they already feel better, um, which is really a lot of fun. Oh, wow. That must be great. Yeah. So what makes connecting with your patients so worthwhile? I mean, I, I'm um, you know, thinking... it's so funny, especially being up in the Antelope Valley for 16 years. You, you do get people that come back, you know, and, 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 and I feel like I'm invested. I always know who it is, you know, and what we worked on before. And, you know, I know... You know, I know about their kids. I know about what's going on in their life. You know, so, you know, when we're here, we're not, you know, dwelling on the pain because obviously we're here to address that. But mm-hmm. I get to know the, the person and, and develop that rapport, and I know what's going on in their, in their life and, you know, and, and, and vice versa. I, I'm willing to share that type of stuff. It's kind of funny. I have quite a few patients that actually come down from the Antelope Valley so they can be treated by me down here um, just because they tried other clinics up there and they didn't get the same level of care. And, and the same result. And so it's kind of funny. I, you know, I've been open two and a half years, but I have at any one time, I usually have five to six patients that are driving down from the Island Valley to get treatment here. And I think that speaks to, you know, that rapport and that trust that I've worked with those patients over the years uh, to help them out. And, and so they're willing to make that, make that trek. That's not funny. That is a statement about your ability and uh-huh. the way that you connect with your patients. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. And I love that you talked about your connection with them, yeah. Obviously, you're incredibly skilled as well mm-hmm. um, in in helping people repair whatever physical ailments that they're going through. But that connection and that trust that you have with your um, medical care provider, you know, Renee and I work in education, and we understand how important it is to have trust in Absolutely. the classroom, in your administrators, if you're a teacher. Uh, so Absolutely. I love that. The whole world works that way. It should. Absolutely. Yeah, we need. We definitely need more of that. We need. We need a lot of trust right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Well, and one of the other things that we're thinking about too, that really goes along with what you're saying here, is you know just this idea of stress and how to help people be in a better space. And when yeah. you can get your body, if it's off whack, into a better space, that helps too. But um, and it could be so essential for so many. But one of the things Sarah and I are going to talk about a little later today, Adam, that I'm hoping maybe you could talk about at this part of the show for a few minutes. Is you know, coming into the holidays, we've got so many children and teens and people in general in our community that are very, very stressed out right now. And so we're wondering, do you have any like tips or just, you know, suggestions for anybody who's heading into the holidays? Maybe their kids are really anxious going into final exams, just anything we can do to be helping each other during stressful times. Absolutely. So, you know, I, I do a lot with stress. Uh, if your body is under stress, it can actually inhibit your healing process. Um, if we get real specific, your body releases cortisol, which uh, if you have too much of that going in your system, it can really kind of wreak havoc on your system. Um, I'm going to get a little scientific, so I hope I, I don't speak in too much medical jargon. But I do a lot with what's called the autonomic nervous system, and there's kind of two parts of that, so I'm going to kind of explain that. There's, there's the sympathetic, which is refer, come to, commonly referred to as your, your fight-or-flight system. So, you know, if you step off a curb and you almost get hit by a car, uh, you know, your sympathetic system in your brain says, hey, whoa, that was not good. Let me get out of here. You know, or you're being chased by a dog. Let me get out of here. And you get adrenaline going and all that type of stuff, and you can react. When somebody's system is balanced, um, that once that stressor is gone, then that system should go into what's called the parasympathetic, which is the other side. And that's kind of your rest, relax, digest system. And so most people, if they're balanced, when that stressor happens, as soon as it's removed, parasympathetic goes in, and then the system comes back to balance. Um, But when people are stressed, like we all are right now dealing with a pandemic, a lot of times our system gets stuck in that sympathetic system, and we can't get there. So then when we're sleeping, we're not getting into that deep sleep where our body and our brain repairs everything from that day and processes everything. Um, And so... One of the big things you've, I'm sure you've heard about, like with meditation and, and diaphragmatic breathing, those are probably the things that you can do at home, taking a walk, stuff like that, just to try and calm that nervous system down um, and, and try and elicit that uh, parasympathetic activity. 
uh, if you come in to my clinic, I actually have a couple things. Uh, this is one of the things that I utilize a lot in therapy because especially I see a lot of patients who may have been dealing with pain for quite some time, and I want to delve into their system and figure out why, why that is and why the recovery is not occurring. Because you know? generally if you put the right environment, the body will heal, heal itself. If it's not healing, there's obviously a reason. Um, and so, again, I'm going to get a little bit more medical here, but okay. uh, if you, what's called heart rate variability, I have a, a piece of equipment that I can run a test, and it will tell me that balance of that sympathetic and that parasympathetic system. Um, and then I can go through and do treatments that will stimulate the nerve that, that stimulates that parasymp- parasympathetic system. And I'm, I'm, again, sorry for getting so technical, but... Um, it's, a, it's really, really cool. And so I have a, a piece of equipment the, the, called the Nubi that, that is um, cutting-edge stuff, and I can actually stimulate that nerve and, and elicit that response uh, to get recovery to, to, to really occur. And it's probably one of my f- patients' favorite treatments. They love the master reset, which is what we do. That sounds amazing. And I hope that wasn't overwhelming. <laughs> no, no, that was great. I love this concept yeah. of a master reset also. Ooh, yeah. Doesn't that sound good post-pandemic? That sounds beautiful. <laughs> It's huge. It's funny because I have a lot of patients who say, you know, they're feeling great and they literally want to just come in, you know, maybe once every couple of weeks for a master reset just to kind of reset their system. Um, and I do it on myself several times a week. It's, uh, it's been phenomenal. Oh, wow. Now, so how would somebody get in touch with you then and, and, um, and focus physical therapy? So our phone number is uh, 661-255-4205. We're lo- located at uh, 2505 uh um, Peachland Avenue, Suite 205. Um, I also have a website. It's uh, www.focusptscv, is in Santa Clarita Valley, dot com. Okay. Um, and those are probably the three easiest ways to get in contact with us. Um, you can see uh, we are on social media, so I do have a Facebook account. Um, I do have an Instagram account. Um, we post kind of our graduation photos and stuff like that, and we do have a blog that has information on different things, and we try and kind of cater to different different things throughout the year. So, you know, when kids go back to school in August, we try to cater to, like, you know, what can we do to lighten their backpacks and, you know, that type of stuff. So um, there's, there's a lot of different avenues. But, uh, yeah, and I'm happy to answer questions if people have questions and whether or not I think I can help them. Um, that's kind of where we go from there. Adam, can I ask a personal question right now? Absolutely. <laughs> How heavy should a backpack be for a 15-year-old? <laughs> because oh, I currently, like I, it usually is. I currently have two 15 year olds, and I measured one of them a couple weeks ago, and it was 23 pounds. Holy cow! Yeah, it's crazy. It, it just, it, it's just, it's just, yeah, that's a lot. Of, and the the hard part is, is a lot of times kids, they don't wear their backpack correctly, so they'll either have it way too low, or they, you know, they'll have it, you know, kind of off to the side and stuff. And so you're you're not distributing the load correctly. It's really tough because, you know, they've got all their books and their lunch and their PE clothes. And, yeah. You know, a lot of times a hydro flask, and you know, so it mm-hmm. adds up really quick. I mean, I, it's it's amazing. So I literally said, "Don't you have a locker?" My son goes, "Yeah, we have lockers, but we're not allowed to use them." What? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, yeah. And I thought, why? Are you, and I'm like, why are you carrying all these books? There's no way you're using these. And he goes, "Because I never know which books I have to use, so I have to have yep. them all with me." Yep. Oh, exactly. My so he's carrying these thick workbooks and like textbooks. Yep. I'm like, this isn't healthy. Oh, right, exactly. And I didn't realize how lucky my kids were yeah, and because 15, we don't. Yeah. They don't have heavy textbooks at their school. Yeah. They use, you know, Google Docs or, you know, shared documents. Yeah. And, and oh, wow. And the yeah. learning man- yeah. management system has everything they have. So the, kid, the school that my kids go to, I literally watch children head in every day with multiple backpacks. Because if you're in yeah. sports, you have to carry right. two backpacks. And yep. so they sometimes find a teacher they can drop one of them off with. Mm-hmm. But there's yep. also hundreds of kids that carry two backpacks a day. Yeah, Holy exactly. Cow. And we don't talk about this. I'm 47. I know what happens to your back over time if you don't take <laughs> right? care of it. Why are we allowing right? bodies that are in the middle of growth? Wow. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about somebody weighing 135 pounds carrying a 20 pound backpack, mm-hmm. you know, or yeah. 150 pounds or 160 pounds, it's yeah. a That's huge percentage, crazy. you know? Now, yeah. And you had mentioned that you take insurance. I heard you say that. Can you tell us yeah. a little bit more about that? Um, just because yeah, I'm, I'm ready I'm to inter- sign inter- up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in network with most of the major insurances. There's a couple that I'm out of network with, um, but for the most part, we are. And that's where, like, you call in and you talk with our front desk, and, and they'll take your information, and then they will actually call the insurance company for you um, and, and verify benefits so that we kind of know. And trying because we try to be very upfront with that, you know. I mean, um, you know, based on everybody's got so many different, you know, mm-hmm 
health care plans and stuff like that. So we try and uh, do that. But yeah, I take most of the uh, most of them. Um. Terrific, terrific. And then, um, so I'm going to give the phone number out one more time for our listeners. Uh-huh. If you want to reach out to Adam at Focus Physical Therapy, it is 661 255 the website is focusphysicaltherapyscv.com. I also placed a link to your website directly in the chat if you are watching us on Facebook Live or if you're in your car and you, you didn't have a chance to write that down, you can go to KHTS's Facebook Live feed and you'll find um, everything you need to get in touch with Adam. And right here on his website, I see the request an appointment button. There so you that's go. That's a really good way to do that. We really want to thank you so much, Adam, for joining us today and telling all of our listeners about your practice. It sounds like you're doing amazing things there. This is Sarah McDaniels together with Renee Marshall, and this is SCVI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley. And you are listening to your hometown station, KHTS. Want to laugh at TMJ and that obscenely overpriced bike guard? Discover the three most common mistakes that must change to stop TMJ for good. Hi, I'm Dr. Thomas Palucky, and WebMD chooses me as best chiropractor in functional medicine in Santa Clarita. Something to think about. So, when you're ready to get better, go to drpalucky.com. That's D-R-P-O-L-U-C-K-I.com to schedule your free consultation now. No contract pest control. Did you hear that? Yes, Unipest has no contract, low impact, affordable and environmentally and family friendly pest control options with orange oil or other family friendly products. Whether it's ants, spiders, gophers, termites or bed bugs, Unipest Termite and Pest Control has an effective, eco-friendly option for you. Call Unipest today for a free orange oil inspection at 661-BUG-7575 or visit (laughs) unipest.com. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHGS, your hometown station, 98F. Oh, my goodness, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Sarah McDaniels and Renee Marshall, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, I on the Valley. So, Renee, we jumped right in with our first guest, Adam Laraway. He was wonderful, by the way. He was great. I, I want to go check. I like want to go meet him face to face and see if he can help my family with their bodies because you know physical therapy is intense and when you find somebody you trust that's everything. it's like education you mm-hmm. know you want to stay with them right right exactly now you've been a guest on eye in the valley numerous times and you're always a favorite but can we check in with you now what projects you have coming up what's what's going on with you renee it is a busy time in education and i specialize in teacher preparation as sarah knows and i work in our community college system and Um, Lots of good stuff going on. Actually, next week, there's a group called Joint Special Populations Advisory Committee, and they have a a series coming up next week called Equity Inclusion for Humanity. Um, Dr. Daisy Gonzalez, who's the chancellor or the acting chancellor of the community college system, is the keynote. I am blessed that I get to be co-facilitating a series all week called Teach on Teachers of Color. And I'm co-facilitating it with Lisa Wilson, who's the founder of the Coalition for Anti-Racist Education. Lisa's a friend of mine. Uh, We've worked together for years. We met each other at COC a bazillion years ago. Um, She's also in early childhood education. And And Lisa was a guest here on the show. Yes, absolutely. When we talked about the Take Heart Conference, Mm -hmm. Lisa and I presented at a national conference uh, not that long ago. And I'm so excited because it's really going to be nice to delve in with everybody about this concept of just 
inclusion and humanity and how do we have humanism as at the forefront of all we do something really cool too with this um jspac event that's happening next week dr carolyn hoffman who's the director of career and college readiness for the william s hart high school district carolyn is actually one of the um presenters as well and she'll be leading a four-day session on uh working with english language learners and so it's so cool oh, to see fantastic. these people from santa clarita going and doing these statewide you know, education initiatives where we're really working on trying to make an impact, not just in our community, but on the state and hopefully at some point on the nation. And so Carolyn Hoffman, you're a star. I'm excited to be working with you next week on that. And uh, I can you believe it's only only 15, 14 days at this point to winter break for all of our students in Santa Fe? Right, right. It's oh great. My gosh. Well, I mean, if you look at count the school days, it's only Today would be 11 days. Is it? Oh, you're Because right. you don't count the weekends, right? Absolutely. But holy cow, that's a lot. That's a lot how fast this year went. In some ways, it feels very slow. To me, this feels like a very quick year. And but, even my, I have twins that are 15, as you know, Sarah, and they've been reflecting on, like, they cannot believe that it's already December. They cannot believe January is a blink away. Mm -hmm. Um, as we mentioned earlier, they're pretty stressed out right now because they're heading into final exams. And, you know, so it's an interesting time in education. For anybody who's on right now, who's listening and with us in the community, please make an effort right now, today, to send a message. If you have children um, or teens who are in our schools in Santa Clarita, please make an effort today to shoot a teacher an email that says, I see you. Thanks for all you're doing. We appreciate you. Oh, because gosh, teacher yes. morale right now as a nation is at one of the lowest points that we have seen. And oh. so um, coming out of the pandemic, there have been just so many unforeseen kind of elements to what education is going to be looking like as we move forward. And so our teachers need hugs right now. They mm -hmm. need some support. Anybody who's facilitating children and teens it is time for us to step up and say, we see you and we appreciate you. So if you've been meaning to do that, today's the day, everybody. What do you think, think, Sarah? I think that's wonderful. There's so many added factors. And I feel like coming back to the classroom, everybody really wants to get back to normal and whatever normal was before. And maybe normal wasn't that great before, but it worked. When, when you're kind of just going through your day by day, you don't feel like changing it, right? And so everybody wants to get back to that comfort level even though it may not have been all that great it was just comfortable because it's what we did right yeah um so all of the stress and everything that is packed in in a teacher's day and what they're expected to do before the pandemic i gotta tell you in a lot of ways is just ridiculous oh absolutely insane the amount of work it takes to be a teacher in a public school, in a private school, in a charter school, in all schools. And now we're back. They're packing all of that into their day and their lives. And oh, by the way, we also are going to pile on to you. Make sure your kids have their masks on. Absolutely. Make Everybody's, sure they're emotionally and physically and mentally well. We're going to give you You're now a doctor, 30 You're now a psychologist, kids, right? You're now, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. We're going to give you 30 kids that haven't seen the inside of a classroom in 2 years and don't know how to behave with one another. Yes. Well, <laughs> and that's one of the things that's fascinating is I love that you use the word behave because I think part of it is they don't even know how to socialize right now. Um, and I see it with adults too. I don't mean to just say this as children and teens, but I think with adults we're we're having more opportunities. With the kids, you know, they're going to school and they still have a lot of restrictions. And so they don't want to cross the line. And I think it's become so stressful for them. And so, you know, always looking for opportunities for kids to be kids. Um, I feel so grateful. I mentioned um, last time I was on how um, my son is involved in theater at Castaic High School. Mm -hmm. And they're, um, he's uh, working with tech crew this week on a performance of Frankenstein. That's even They're actually having the last performance tonight. If anybody wants to check out Castaic High School, they've got a great performance happening this evening. Um, and I believe it's 7 o'clock, if I remember correctly. And it's great. Um, here's the thing. Like, for him, being involved in something yeah. is what has brought him joy. Yeah. And so I think one of the things when we're talking about how do we help our kids to socialize, how do we help them to be whole again, we have to get them involved in something. With theater, I feel so grateful. Hannah, uh, Hannah Mystery is the teacher. She was a teacher of the year for Castaic High. I literally sent her a message and said, 
hey, any chance we could do a little social thing for the kids at the end of the semester? Oh, you were like, she had done for that, that when you were here before. She had done the Halloween you know, thing at the park, and it was so awesome. And she writes back, fantastic, let's do it. So next week, I'm going to be hosting all the Theater 2 and Theater 3 kids who are able to attend my backyard for oh, a wow. holiday party. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, I'm th- and I'm literally thinking, how do I construct experiences? And not that I want it to be um, structured. I don't. But you want to create an environment that will allow the kids to show up and instantly start socializing. So I've been thinking about what kind of like things we can have around and get the karaoke machine out and just, you know, things to kind of elicit that um, motivation to, to connect. Okay. So we've got our list as parents. So one is to email our facilitators. Yes, absolutely. And our teachers. Principals Prin- too. Oh any my gosh. leadership. Absolutely. That attendance clerk oh my is gosh. probably how- pulling their hair out right now. How about so- our five superintendents? Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. Steve, I, Steve, Colleen, I- everybody, my heart's out to you. They've, they've been champions right now through this pandemic and, and trying to, bring thousands of people through this uncharted territory you know we got to give love we got to do that and And then then the second thing is open up your home in your backyard and throw a party (laughs) for your kids sports team or whatever open up a space might be a tall well i would say open up a space (laughs) space and maybe you don't have a space (laughs) in your own home so maybe it could be that you propose why don't we go after school to the park? Mm-hmm. Why don't we go to the mall? Why don't we just it's somewhere to get outside, to move, to talk, and to just come down here? Oh my oh, goodness! Yeah. Downtown New Main Hall, street. Main Street. It's so beautifully lit up. It's so pretty. It just walk strolling down the street, and even if you missed the big light up Main Street event, uh, the lights are still there. They'll come on when the sun goes down. Walk down here and just enjoy being outside Absolutely. with your family, you know, something, with your friends. Something great's happening tomorrow if people are interested. I know we were going to talk about it a little sure. bit later, but maybe we just dive into it now. That's fine. Tomorrow at the New Hall Library starting at 10 o'clock in the morning <gasps> is the Literacy and Arts Festival. I believe it's the 14th year. I love the Literacy I Festival. I think I've attended since year one, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm so excited that my twins, um, who are both 15, as I said, are going to be volunteering at the whole event this year. They're going to be helping to run the booth for the SCV Education Foundation, Wonderful. which I am a proud, proud board member for. But Literacy and Arts Festival, Sarah, as you know, it's a blast. It runs from 10 to 2. It's at the New Hall Library. There's literally like people in costumes and people singing and people dancing and there's activity tables and there's giveaways and they're doing a touch a truck there with some fire trucks and some other things. We haven't been able to touch stuff in two years. Get your kids <laughs> out there. <laughs> Let them touch awesome. stuff. Awesome. Um, and now with that um, new parking structure yes. right across the street from the library, because when you if you pull into the library, it'll be kind of like... There, How it is the farmer's market where you can't get into the whole... It's only handicapped parking yeah. at the library on Saturday. Yeah, you yeah. can't get to the whole parking lot. So just across the street where the parking structure is. Um, so you get to Super see beautiful easy. new hall. You get to participate. I love the Literacy Festival and Arts Festival. The city... Um, has done a fantastic job. Our librarians do an amazing job. It's, and everybody comes together, <laughs> you know. It was funny because we um, – Do you remember the year it rained? Oh, yes, I do. do and we all the had year to move, the rain, in, uh, <laughs> move inside? Do you remember the windstorm when it was at the library or it was at the park down the street from the Boys and Girls Club? Oh, my gosh. I do remember <laughs> that. You know, the SCVI high schoolers painted a car that year. We had I remember a, we that. Had a park we did the paint. box city through teach at COC, so we had boxes blowing. Uh, flying all but over the place. But we didn't stop because no. we knew that families and kids were there, and it didn't matter if it was windy. It didn't matter if it was raining a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. The show must go on. Tomorrow, we're due to have beautiful weather. It's going to no be excuse. It's going to be great. Another thing, too, at the same time that the Literacy and Arts Festival, well, Literacy and Arts is is 10 to 12, or excuse me, 10 to 2, almost the same time, some overlapping. We also have the Farmer's Market happening right next door to Literacy and Arts Festival. It's 830 to 1, tons of farmers, tons of great produce, tons of great products. They also have bands. They also have singers. I mean, if you haven't come out to Farmer's Market recently, come out tomorrow. Seriously. Farmer's Market and Literacy and Arts Festival in the same location. Come at 10 o'clock. You're going to be set. It's going to be a great day. Um, I know with the Ed Foundation booth, we literally have a prize wheel. And I went. I, you can't even imagine what we have for anybody who comes up. There's all sorts of books and pencils and DVDs and, and squishy balls and, you know, things to promote 
wellness with kids and fun and, you know, being a kid, being a teenager, you know, we want adults to pop over too. So hopefully it'll be a great day tomorrow. I'm going to, um, when we're on the commercial break, I'll look it up and I'll put a link in the chat for people who want to find out more about it. I remember, I don't know if they still do this. They, um, had, that's where we discovered the read to a dog program when my kids were little. Yes. And one of my favorite memories is my three-year-old trying to read to this adorable Sheltie. And her big brother, her seven-year-old brother, like leaning over her shoulder, whispering the words because she couldn't quite read yet, but she was trying. Um, So I have a a fantastic picture of her, you know, with the book and her brother leaning over her shoulder. I love it. I love that. Oh, he's a senior now. Oh my goodness. You think you're stressed with 15-year-olds and how fast the time goes by? Try having a 12th grader applying to college. It is... It's, I want to savor every moment of this year because he's going to be gone next year, yeah, right? So yeah. I want to savor every moment of having my kid home. Yeah. We were we were putting out Christmas decorations this year, and there's this little thing that they have to take turns with since they were yeah. little, like who does this and who does that. And, and we were setting it up, and um, I said something out loud like, oh, well – you know, to, to his little sister, I said, well, you get to do that next for the year? next next year for sure because he won't be here. He'll be, Did he go, he'll oh! be in his dorm. She almost <laughs> cried. She just went, Aww. no, no, he's going to have to come home That was early. a tangible, December that was 1st. very tangible for her for the way that you said that. Yeah. You know? She was just like, wait, no. I said, he'll be home for Christmas. He'll but be he, home. But, but he might be a pop- not be home for decorating. He might not be home for decorating. Yeah. You know, she said, she said, oh, wait, wait, wait. So I'm here I am trying to savor all these moments. But there's all this extra stuff yeah. that we have to do senior year. Oh yes, I we... FAFSAs and applications and and you know reminding him did you did you ask somebody for that person for that letter of recommendation and you know all of these extra things that it's I so hate funny being we, a nag. <laughs> we have a perception that teenagers should be moving away from their parents. Our system literally sets it up like by the time you're in seventh and eighth grade, you, the kids need to send the emails to the teachers, not parents. By the time they're in high school, the kids are making very serious decisions about their future. My kids started high school at 13. Right. 13, right? Oh. At a certain point, I think we got to realize that we all need to still work together and our kids need us. Yeah. And that's okay. It's um, okay. I'm on the other side right now where um, my we're looking at the I Getsy, um, what the requirements are to get into a college for CSU and UC. And um, as you know, I've been in education forever. I've decided I want to change the requirements. Why is it more valid for a student to have three to four years of language as a mandatory versus saying, why don't we encourage two years? And then in those other times, why don't you do theater? Why don't you do dance? Why don't you do? I want to talk more about that. I want to talk more about that. We're going to have to cut to commercial. You are listening to SCVI and I lead schools, I in the Valley. I'm Sarah McDaniels together with co-host Renee Marshall. And we'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's Santa Clarita Hearing Center.com. Experience Frontier Toyota's all new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO, Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Your hometown station, KHTS.
Okay. Welcome back. You are listening to KHGS, your hometown station, 98.1. I said it right that time. FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Sarah McDaniels, and you're listening to SCVI, and I lead schools. I on the Valley. So before we went to the break, we just have a few more minutes um, before we hit the top of the hour. We were talking and we continued the conversation during the commercial about current education state standards that require 13-year-olds to know what they want to do for the rest of their lives. And to be comfortable with uncertainty. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) So how do you really feel about that, Renee? Do you think that's okay? I think, (laughs) I'm going to be honest because I I think that there's changes that need to happen as a statewide level that have not been, that have so much process and procedures that will take many years to happen. I think in Santa Clarita, though, we as a community could make efforts to value children where they are. And I'm gonna give a perfect example. There are certain events that happen in our community for the holidays, and there'll be one price if you're up to 12 years old. And the moment you turn 13, it suddenly becomes an adult price. Why? Yeah. Don't we want 14, 15, 16, 17 year olds to have something to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, and why do, why do we do that? Why do we have, like, you go to the movies, and if you're over a certain age, then you're getting, paying the adult price when you're not an adult. You have no other privileges of being an adult. Except right, being and you in the, can't even go to half the movies in the theater because you're under 17. Yeah. Right? What but if we, as a, the, in a community, decided that we're going to value children 100% as a child, mm, as a category of child, even as a teenager, up until the day before they turn 18? You know what I mean? So as a community, what if we decided that we were going to make changes? Do you know Ooh, what I'm saying? I love that. It could be grassroots. I've talked with Andrew about this like, because I'm like, <laughs> you know what? We need our elected officials to buy into this idea and to value children in a very different way. And to look at our 13 and 14-year-olds, which is a pivotal time. When ki- when ki- look when kids get in trouble. Guess what? Yeah. It's usually junior high and high school. Yeah. Why is it that there's no after school program starting in junior high? There's nothing like, and then when you go to high school, if you're involved in something, you've got something. But, and I, for the longest time I was assuming, gosh, there's so much to do in high school. Every kid has to be involved. And then I went to a football game and you see the clusters that are involved, right? Mm -hmm. And then you see hundreds of kids as spectators. Mm-hmm. And I wonder where where is their involvement? Where's their involvement? You know, well, and I feel like there's this no man's land between yep. elementary school, where we, especially in this valley, and you know at SCBI and I lead schools, we expose our kids to so many so much variety of things. You mm-hmm. know, starting in kindergarten at SCBI, our kids are having visual arts, music. Absolutely. Um, we've had theater. We have foreign languages. We have um, sports programs at a very young age. So that's what happens, and they get exposed to a lot. And then when they get to middle school at SCBI, we do ask them to kind of start to focus, hone it in. You're not going to have all those classes every single week. Mm -hmm. So pick one of the arts. Do you want to focus more on music? Do you want to focus more on theater? Do you want to focus more on on visual arts? Um, So we will do that. And then in high school... In traditional schools, a lot more opens up. But what I see when I go to these county conferences, these state conferences, and I'm mostly focusing on arts education, so I don't know so much about sports. I will say that. Middle schools is no man's land. Yeah. Elementary school kids have a lot of opportunities to participate in things. Then there's this three-year break Mm -hmm. where there isn't much to offer. Mm -hmm. Unless you have money. Unless, oh, unless you have you money can, and you can your pay for your can kids. pay for it. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And so then when they get to high school, they haven't had any experiences for the last three years. Many. And so yeah. they're not apt to sign up mm-hmm. and well, elect and to do those classes. They haven't been in school. And right. So even like the, well, the, yeah. the physicality of the space is new for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, but I think it's really about stepping back and saying, what do we value as a community? You know, Santa Clarita was built to be a, family, a master plan family community. How do we put family at the forefront? How do we have these conversations with our city officials and our elected boards and and, and people of power? How do we talk to the Santa Clarita 51 people? <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah I think that's a, that's a good start. That's a good start. 
All right, I'm going to give a really quick plug right now. You were talking about yeah, theater. theater. So SCBI, my kids are also in theater, but not just because my kids are, but because I love SCBI and I love all the productions they do. Uh, they continued through the pandemic with their theater program. It was love it. insane. It was so wonderful. The kids didn't want to stop. So they did an online production Beautiful. that they wrote. It was sort of like an experimental theater piece based on the mythology of Ragnarok. But now they're back in their beautiful theater space. Speaking of tech, my son's stage managing. Nice. Um, and my daughter is actually in the play this year, so it's kind of fun to have a, my my 14-year-old and my 17-year-old working together That's on something. Cool. It's called The Butterfly at the Bottom of the Box. It's going to be a wonderful production. I'm not just saying that because I'm mom. Uh, it's based on uh, the tro- Greek tragedy of Trojan women. Mm-hmm. But they've updated it quite a bit. Uh, so you're going to love the performance. You can purchase tickets online for tonight's show. They also have a Saturday matinee and a Saturday evening performance. And I'll go ahead and I'll put the the link for that in the chat. Next Tuesday night, SCVI will be hosting a tour and information session for families who are interested in joining the school. While you're there, you can meet the directors, learn more about SCVI's unique programming offerings like our dual language immersion program. We are the only school in Santa Clarita that offers the International Baccalaureate. And we have a student aerospace program and so much more. We do have athletics. It's a myth that charter schools don't provide athletics. We don't have a touch football, like tackle football team, but we have an amazing flag football team. All righty. How are we doing on time? Okay. Good, because I wanted to ask you one more question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what can we do over winter break with our kids we're gonna have three weeks off right yes what are we gonna what do, what can we do with our family what are we gonna do well i've got something called crate my phone which a local businesswoman has created a cute little crate that it's literally says crate my phone that you put over by your front door so i'm gonna intentionally crate my phone with my kids for a certain portion of every single day because what i have found is when i remove all of that distraction from all of us um things can be better and we do more. And so I'm going to literally make a conscious effort that every day, I'm not going to like, it's not going to be like a punishment. It's more going to be like, let's start the morning for the first three hours together. Let's create our phones and go do something. Biggest thing for me, we're getting outside Uh because we, it doesn't matter what the weather is. People have this perception. If it's cold that you're going to get a cold. No, Uh -uh. you just put on some layers and you go outside, um, go for a hike. We have so many beautiful places in Santa Clarita. Breathe. Mm-hmm. breathe, breathe. Another thing that I like to do too, to help to de-stress is really to be thinking about my five senses at all time. If I find like I'm not in a good space, I get outside. What can I see? What can I smell? What can I hear? I literally ground myself by doing things like I'm going to stand outside. I'm going to stare at the horizon for the next three minutes. Oh, because it will beautiful. bring you down. And you that's know? great for, especially with those of us who are working from home. Absolutely. We're on our screens all the time. So if you can, there, there's an exercise that you can do. Like if, even if you're in an office and you're on your screen, uh, I think it's every 20 to 30 minutes it's recommended. You close your eyes for a moment. You look mm-hmm. across the room. You focus your gaze on something at least 20 feet away. Mm-hmm. It has to be at least 20 feet away and not another screen. Focus your gaze on that for 30 full seconds. Close your eyes again, and then you can return, and it will help. Kind of like that reset that we were talking about. It will help with the... the brain chemistry, the stress levels that you have from staring at a screen all day long. Absolutely. I also have these fancy <laughs> things. They are the the, the light protectors. The light right? protectors. They have that blue blocking. Yeah, and, I love and it. my headaches went away when I switched to these. Awesome, awesome. I'm also gonna get out and do some stuff that our family hasn't had a chance to do recently. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like my right. daughter loves going to the Newhall Library. We haven't been in for a few weeks to check out books and movies. Um, you know, let's go get some movies and veg out together. My kids, my, as I mentioned, my kids are a little older. My daughter and I just watched The Holiday, that movie with um, Kate Winslet and, you know, I love Jack that Black. movie. <laughs> and she literally goes, now I understand why you love this movie. So find those moments together. Make those moments together. And really, one of the best ways to do it is by turning our phones off for a little bit. I think that's a really yeah. good idea. That's a great idea. All right. When we come back, we are going to hear from... Wendy Ruiz and Candace Butera. They're going to tell us a little bit about what's going on with Little Eye Leaders and I Create. I am Sarah McDaniels, together here with Renee Marshall, and you're listening to SCVI, and I lead schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.
Our trash has got to go somewhere, and Chiquita Canyon Landfill is helping make the Santa Clarita Valley a little greener. Our local landfill creates clean energy from our waste disposal to power 10,000 homes each year. With their 9.2 megawatt clean energy facility harnessing the landfill's methane gas, you can feel good that the waste from your home in the SCV is helping create a clean energy source. Chiquita Canyon Landfill is our partner in sustainable living. Chiquita Canyon is helping lead the way to a greener future. Chiquita Canyon Landfill, our partner in sustainable living. KHTS, AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 9 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. The president stays the course on Lisa Brady, Fox News. He has just spoken about the latest jobs report, which offers a mixed picture. Fox's Jared Halpern has this live. President Biden says the economy is markedly stronger than a year ago, responding to the latest Labor Department report showing a declining unemployment rate dropping to 4.2 percent. Simply put, America, America is back to work and our jobs recovery is going very slow. Still, the pace of hiring slowed last month with 210,000 jobs added, less than economists had predicted. The previous month's job gains were revised upwards. It's not enough to know that we're making progress. You need to see it and feel it in your own lives, around the kitchen table in your checkbook. President Biden acknowledged having a hoarse voice, telling reporters it's a cold, Lisa. Thanks, Jared. COVID's Omicron variant has now been found in at least six states. Nebraska just announcing a half dozen cases, including someone who had traveled to Nigeria. The other five cases likely household contact with that person. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says federal and local health officials are working together. Across the country, public health departments are looking at sequence data, at travel histories and epidemiologic indicators at diagnostic data to identify possible cases of Omicron. Worldwide, it's now in some 40 countries. Mexico just announcing its first case. President Biden says he's not considering any restrictions on domestic air travel at this point, adding he's relying on guidance from health officials. Prosecutors in Michigan just announcing charges against the parents of a 15-year-old boy charged with murder at a high school shooting this week. The parents charged with involuntary manslaughter. America is listening to Fox News. I struggled with symptoms like frequent gas and stomach pain for years. I was bloated all the time with daily diarrhea. At first, I thought it was what I was eating. I kept thinking it was stomach issues. So I did my research and talked to my doctor, and we finally uncovered the truth. It, it was, was actually EPI. Exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, or EPI, is a condition where your pancreas is unable to help break down your food. It can lead to symptoms like diarrhea, gas, bloating, stomach pain, unexplained weight loss, and oily stools. And EPI symptoms can be confused with those of other common digestive conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's, and celiac disease. So getting to the right diagnosis meant being more open with my doctor about the severity of my symptoms and how often they were happening. But there's good news. EPI is manageable, so don't wait any longer. Use the symptom checker at identifyepi.com and schedule a visit or call with your doctor to ask, Could, could I, I have, have EPI? EPI? Sponsored by AbbVie. A warning to holiday shoppers that online scams are everywhere and that Facebook is where many customers are being duped. The Better Business Bureau released a new study finding that as more people have shopped online during the pandemic, scams have increased as well. Their shopping fraud tracker says scams doubled between 2019 and 2020, as did complaints to the FTC. The study found that among those who lost money in a transaction, 70% of those transactions began on Facebook or Instagram. The Better Business Bureau says many of these Fraudulent companies are based in China and are asking for payment through PayPal, if not a credit card. They advise using a website like scamadvisor.com to see how long a website has existed before you buy off of it, suggesting that newer websites may be red flags. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. A jury is seated to hear the manslaughter case against former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter, who says she mistakenly fired her gun instead of her taser in the April traffic stop killing of Dante Wright, who was black. Potter's white, so are most of the jurors opening statements set for next week. Actor Alec Baldwin says he's not to blame for the accidental death of a cinematographer. Alec Baldwin is deflecting blame in the on-set accidental shooting death of Ross cinematographer 
Helena Hutchins. In an ABC interview, the actor told his friend George Stephanopoulos that this was the worst thing that has ever happened to him. Someone is responsible for what happened, and I can't say who that is, but I know it's not me. Baldwin also said he didn't pull the trigger, which was supported by the lawyer of the assistant director, Dave Halls. However, actor John Schneider responded in his own video that called the interview part of a propaganda machine to make Alec look like a victim. He said guns don't go off by themselves. A single action weapon needs to be cocked and fired. Michelle Polino, Fox News. Well, Baldwin says the gun went off when he released the hammer. I'm Lisa Brady. This is Fox News. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is the Fox Business Report. On Wall Street, stocks could be heading for a losing week with more selling this morning on COVID variant worries. Now, some of those worries are driving up demand for COVID vaccinations. Vaccine makers Moderna and Pfizer are trading to the upside today. Pfizer's vaccine with BioNTech getting a lot of attention. The CEO of BioNTech says it should be able to adapt its coronavirus vaccine relatively quickly in response to the new variant. And the next few weeks will show how urgently an upgrade is needed. And Honda is recalling nearly 725,000 SUVs and pickup trucks because the hoods can open while the vehicle's moving. The recall covers certain 2019 passports, 2016 through 2019 pilots, and 2017 through 2020 Ridgeline pickups. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Lillian Wu, invested in you. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation is gifting heroes at least a home a day from Thanksgiving to New Year's Eve in its season of hope. Frank Ziller walked more than 500 miles through six states to pay tribute to the fallen to mark 20 years since 9-11. And in firsts for our country, those lost to 9-11 illness and service members lost in the war on terror had their names read aloud in ceremonies hosted by the foundation. Donate $11 a month at T2T. Org. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. No doubt about it, LA is an awesome place to live. But even while living in the land of beaches and mountains, it's safe to say that we could all use a real vacation right about now. One where you don't have to stop for gas, cook your own meals, or strip your own sheets. Lucky for us, Princess Cruises has a port right here in L.A. Now, for a limited time, L.A. residents can sail with Princess from just $89 per day to the beaches of Mexico, the tropics of Hawaii, or cruise along the California coast without getting stuck in traffic. That's right, just $89 per day. And while these great destinations aren't going anywhere, these deals won't be around forever. So visit princess.com, call 1-800-PRINCESS, or contact your travel advisor to book your cruise today. Set sail with LA's cruise line, Princess Cruises. Terms and restrictions apply. Promotional pricing ends November 30th, 2021. Ships are Bermuda and British Registry. Before booking, consult the CDC website at www.cdc.gov. Fall is in full swing here in the Santa Clarita Valley, and Dunkin' has the drinks to match. Try the peppermint mocha or toasted white chocolate signature lattes, or warm up with a white mocha hot chocolate. If pumpkin is your favorite, try the pumpkin swirl with cold foam. Don't forget to grab a bite to eat, like pancake minis or a chicken bacon and cheese croissant stuffer. And starting December 1st, donuts with holly berry sprinkles. Order ahead with the Dunkin' app and accumulate points. Located on Bouquet Canyon in the Lowe Shopping Center and on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country, both with curbside pickup, Uber Eats, DoorDash, and and Grubhub, or use the drive through at Sierra Highway. Santa Clarita runs on Duncan. Now more than ever, your child needs a place to be inspired. iCreate is iLead's after-school program for ages 5 through 12. It's a safe and welcoming space to support students' academic pursuits while they exercise their mind, body, and creative spirit. iCreate has flexible hours to accommodate different remote learning release times, and our facility is fully COVID guideline compliant. Come explore how a play-based approach can improve every aspect of your learner's performance. Enroll now at littleileaders.org forward slash iCreate. I lead schools, free to think, inspired to lead. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Wait, one. Can you hear me now? 
There we go. <laughs> Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is Renee Marshall, um, joined with Sarah McDaniels today, and you are listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley. We are coming to you live from KHTS Studios here at the center of Main Street in beautiful downtown New Hall. Um, Sarah, do you want to tell us a little bit who's coming on next? Absolutely. So we're really excited to hear from our next two amazing women. They are the leaders of Little I Leaders and I Create, which is uh, located on the campus of SCVI Charter School, but is adjacent and it is a, a tuition braced. We have a uh, after school care and then also it's a tuition based preschool and they go all the way down to infants and toddlers. So it's really amazing. Let me give you a little bit of background on these ladies and then we can dive in. So Wendy Ruiz has been a trusted advisor to I Lead founder Amber Reskin since the school's inception and officially joined the SCBI team in 2009 when her son was in second grade. She quickly immersed herself into the school's culture, spearheading the spirit wear program. Oh my goodness, I remember. I have some of my favorite shirts I, I purchased from you, Wendy. Um, she led Junior Lego League for SCBI's K through fourth grade learners for so many years. Um, and then since joining the board of directors, Wendy has served both as secretary and parent representative, played a crucial role in supporting iLead's professional development, star searches, parent support, WASC accreditation. And then you took a step back from the board, if I'm correct, Wendy. And uh, yep. that's right. And so, and you were absolutely integral in building the Little Eye Leaders Preschool. You currently are on the faculty at COC, right? Mm -hmm. In the Childhood Education Department. Candace Butera comes to us today. She has been working in early childhood education for over 20 years. She has had the pleasure of serving families as both teacher and administrator, various programs in the Santa Cruz Valley, earning her BA in psychology from Cal State University Northridge, her Master's of Science in Child Development from the University of Laverne. Her favorite part of the role of director is both mentoring staff as well as partnering with families to provide education and specific care to their child's needs. That's what it's all about. Also finding solutions to any challenges that come up. Matt would love this part if he was here today. Candace's other love is hosting special events around the holidays, around schools. He loves holidays. So Grandparents' Day, summer picnics, holiday open house, just to name a few. Welcome, ladies. How are you today? We're good. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. So can you tell us a little bit about the Little Eye Leaders program and what's the philosophy behind the program? Okay, I'll pull it up. Hello. Good morning. Hi. So, Little Eye Leaders, we are a private nonprofit program. We serve infants six weeks until through school age, so we have a before and after school program as well. Our philosophy is relationship-based and play-based. Mm. So we believe following the child's interests, following their development, and really children or learners in, are come first in mind. That's fantastic. I that love goes along that. with what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. actually, right before they came on. It really does. It really does. Even when we were just talking with our first guest, we were talking about relationship building and getting to know the people that you work with and how important that is. So um, let me ask you, so what are the ages? You said they go as young as six weeks? Six weeks is the youngest we take, yeah. Oh. We don't get a lot of six-week-olds, but we do get some young ones. Okay, okay. And then all the way up to school age. And what hours are you guys open? 6.30 to 6. Okay, so this can help with working parents? Yeah, we're open year-round. Oh, so will you be open during, like, when the schools are on winter break? Will you guys be open? We are. We're only closed Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And, okay. Well, yeah, Christmas Day and New Year's Day is a Saturday, so. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, that works out this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. So, um, Candice, are you available? Oh. Hold on, yep. Yeah, I'm going to send it over there. And I really appreciate it. So our listeners are aware, yes. Wendy and Candace are currently at the school calling in, and um, they are also filling in for their front desk person. 
So they're going to tag team back and forth for this interview. I really appreciate them, you know, keeping their commitment, still joining us, sharing about their program. Um, so we this will is... call it out who we're going to ask the questions to so you guys can Perfect. pass back and forth. So this is what educators do, too. You right? make it work, right? Multitasking. You can't, like you you can't leave the front desk leave. unattended, so you st you got to be more than one thing someday. Yes, you've yeah. got to be there, and especially the check-in. So speaking of which, Candace, tell us a little bit about, like, the check-in procedure, the safety procedures that you guys are going through with your little ones, what t you know, especially with COVID. Well, and I think that they were one of the first preschools to open, if I remember correctly, Candace, weren't you? It seemed like in the pandemic, a lot of schools weren't able to open as quickly as others, a lot of centers. And so I'd love to hear more about safety because you must be doing something right because you opened up really quickly. And I know families were, especially our essential workers were so, they needed it. So um, we appreciate everything you've done. Yeah, so we were very excited to reopen um, pretty quickly. We had um, weekly Zoom meetings with families and staff, and families were practically begging us to reopen. And so we really evaluated how we can run the center safely, um, keep children safe, but also make the children's day as normal and routine and fun as possible with little um, – uh, interruption by COVID. And so that's something we really looked at and evaluated before we reopened. And once uh, we put a plan in place, we realized we could do that uh, very well. So we have been. So we opened um, just at the end of May. Uh, oh, wow. Um, so we were closed for just about six, six weeks or so. <clears throat> and we've been open ever since. And we've had, uh, knock on wood, very little impact with COVID. The health department has praised us for like being really careful with, you know, preventing spread and outbreaks and stuff. So um, we're very happy with that. We do a check-in system every morning, so we um, have families do a health screening to make sure that the child has not had any um, fever or any other symptoms of COVID. And we're also really proactive with families, which um, is challenging for working families sometimes, but if a child has any sort of symptoms, we ask that they be tested. Um, it's not always the easiest thing, but it's the best way to protect our school. Um, and so our families have, <clears throat> excuse me, have been extremely understanding and very supportive of that. And we couldn't have done and been so successful getting through COVID without, without them. So we're Doesn't very, that go very to the relationships though? I mean, like you were just talking about the importance of relationships, or I think that was Wendy and it's like, that goes to it. You've got those relationships and they understand if you're, if you're coming to them saying, this is what's going on. We need you, you know, you got to sniff, your child has a sniffle today. And therefore, this is the protocol. It's so wonderful to hear that the parents and guardians and families are being supportive of those decisions. But I think it comes back to that relational side of they trust you. You know, they trust the center. Right. And I think that at Little Eye Leaders and I create, you know, coming from that same philosophy of SCVI and I lead, we're, you know, we're a sense of community and we're responsible for one another. So my guess is, Candace, that your families understand that, you know, it isn't maybe an inconvenience for me today because my, my child has symptoms and I've got to wait until I get them a test and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're fine. It's just, you know, allergies and wind and, and they mimic those symptoms, but they understand that they have that responsibility to all the other families at iCreate. Um, <laughs> That's so the, exactly it. And we've had families say that exact thing. Um, yeah that they understand that they're protecting our community and they're, they're being proactive. And so we're extremely thankful for that. That's um, the I lead culture. I, I mean, that's that. the culture. It's what it is. That's congratulations, Candace and Wendy, because that's not always attainable um, for many places right now. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, really, really quickly. So you have um, – some openings now, or you had, you've had so much success, it sounds like, with your infant and toddler program, that you are opening up another room and able to accept more littles into your program. Candace, this is so exciting for me because as somebody who served in early childhood, we know that we do not have enough quality care for infants and toddlers. So is it true that you're opening up and you have additional spaces available right now, especially as we're going to the holidays? I know a lot of families will want to know about this. Yeah, we're very excited to be able to offer this. So we um, have had a wait list in our infant and toddler programs for t through COVID, pre-COVID. Um, it's just because we have the low ratios and the quality mm -hmm. program, um, we've always been, uh, I guess, gifted in a way, but also tortured by a wait list. 
um, for families who really need the care. Yeah. Um, and so we're very fortunate to be able to have an extra space to expand. And so we're going to have a dedicated twos classroom, a dedicated toddler classroom for one-year-olds, and a dedicated infant classroom um, for zero to 12 months. And so um, we're in the process of getting our facilitators retrained and um, um, setting up a new classroom space, ordering new supplies, um, and we're very, very excited. We're also um, looking for some support facilitators for that side note, if any uh, ECE people are out there really excited about infant toddlers. Um, so yes, we're very excited about it. We already have a lot of enrollment, but there are a few spaces left. Okay. Something really exciting about our two-year-old program that's a little bit different than others is licensing Title 22, the ratios is 1 to 12 for two-year-olds. Our ratio is 1 to 7. Could you say that again, please? Yeah, out. Yeah, I hear. Sorry, guys, I'm loud. No, so, no, 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 we can hear you, but it's oh. so important. I want families to understand that and to, to get what it means. Yeah, so Title 22, require, um, their ratios are 1 to 12 once children turn 24 months. And they also don't mandate group size, so you can have as many children as can fit based off of licensing standards, which is 35 square feet per child. So when you say so, 1 to 12 ratio, what that means is for every 12 little toddlers that you have running around. 12 two-year-olds. Right. Two-year-olds. Two-year-olds. There two -year -olds. Is only you needs have... to be one adult in the room with them. Right. And it could be a large room that has 36 two-year-olds exactly. running around. And if there's three adults, that's okay. Exactly. Okay. Which is really challenging, especially when you need to go change a diaper. And now you have two teachers with 35 children, right? Right, right. And so what's, yeah. what, how do you guys run this differently then? So the way our two-year-old program is, is we've designed it where it's a one-to-seven ratio, and we'll have no more than 14 learners or toddlers in that classroom. That's amazing. So they're just going to be with 13 other little friends their age, right. but they're also going to have two adults in the room. So right. why do you guys do that that way? I mean, aside from just the, the crowd control chaos, why do you think that that's important? Because they're smart. <laughs> <laughs> It really is best practice, right? We want to provide quality care, and the way to do that is to have interactions with the, between the facilitators and the learners and to have that time where you can sit and comfort them or read to them or interact with them. And when you have the larger ratios, it just makes it much too challenging. You're putting out fires instead of actually engaging. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a really important point about building the relationships. But when there are so many young people in the room, your day just becomes about putting out fires and getting Yeah, it, also, it adds a lot of stress to the facilitators, which then trickles down to the learners. Mm -hmm. The day becomes diapering, 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 because they're 24-month-olds. Diapering know what I mean? and, when you think about and, it. and don't climb on that and don't yeah. climb on that. and. Stop. <laughs> and the last thing we want to do is be like, don't stop, don't stop. Like, right. and that's all we're right. doing, right? Right, right. Yeah. It really impacts behavior. It impacts yeah. just their whole So their talk whole to day. us about your philosophy on that. I think we, we've had this conversation before, so I'm kind of leading this question when don't do this. No, no, don't do this. And, and how many times a day do children hear the word no? And you have a different idea around that, I believe, Wendy. You want to talk to we do. That? We really try to create a yes environment. That's what our program is about versus a no environment. And so we try to create a space where our, we call them learners, but where the learners can explore safely, can make their own decisions, can create their own ideas. And with that, it becomes you know, really creating a space where they, everything is at their level, the shelves are open, the materials are available. Uh, we put out developmentally appropriate materials and things that mm -hmm. are safe for them mm -hmm. so that we don't have to say, no, don't touch that or no, don't do that. But instead, we talk to them, you know, how are you going to work with that today? Tell me how you'd like to use that today. And really listen to their ideas versus stopping them from oh, from using their ideas. <laughs> that's wonderful. So you basically you put away the woodworking equipment. When you right. Little, right. So you've, well, you've got we that use away, their but... own. Yeah, we, we don't use. We wouldn't use saws and. I was going to say, um, are you sure about this? Because Wendy's not going to put away the woodworking equipment. <laughs> I was say, we do woodworking. We just don't use. Those we just have plastic materials. hammers. <laughs> oh, that's 
that's Thank you, right. Renee. <laughs> but it really comes down to, um, you know, one thing I actually, before I make this other comment, or make this other comment, one of the things I want to ask Wendy, you know, cost is a concern for people at all times when you're looking at preschools. Um, with a lower ratio, it sounds like you're able to stay consistent pricing-wise to other centers in Santa Clarita. Is that correct? That is one of our biggest challenges. Uh, we'll be real honest, we are looking at that more closely. Sure. <laughs> Everyone is, I think, trying to make up for lost time during COVID when our ratios were cut down to 50%. And so between that and trying to still maintain that high quality, we're not willing to give up that high quality. Good for Sometimes you. it will look like that our ratio, that our cost might be a little bit higher than other programs. But it's not going to be like I'm, doing, I'm getting a one to seven ratio and therefore it's going to be twice the cost. Right. Not at all. Right. So it no, might be minimal. Yeah, it's still programs. competitive. That's yeah. fantastic. That's fantastic. I love that. We are a nonprofit program, so that makes it a little bit different too. Right. You're not trying to, to make money off of it. You just got to meet your bottom Clear. line, pay your rent, right. pay your staff. Buy all that great safe woodworking equipment <laughs> for your your kiddos. I as soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, "Oh, I I forgot. This is a hands on environment. This is an." You gotta IV. remember, Wendy and I were professors together at COC for a long time, so oh, we've been. Uh, yeah. I'm like, wait a second. Oh, but we don't yeah. put away the mud kitchen. No, we don't the, put stuff away. And all of that because they're twos. We add more. <laughs> I, I believe in. I don't underestimate the competency of children. Because I want to find out where kids are before I make judgments. Because there's times when you might come into a third or four year, a three year old or four year old who has a whole different skill set than right. other kids their age. And so it's kind of like us right now as adults. We want people to meet us where we are. And so Wendy, Candace, and little eye leaders meets every single one of those children, even the infants, exactly what they are to provide Absolutely. their needs of what they need that day at that moment, which is what education should be. Yeah. Yeah. For, everybody. For everybody. everybody. But it's got to start very, very, very young all the time. That has been it. We're, let's talk some more about that when we come back. Um, Sarah McDaniels together here with Renee Marshall filling in for Matt Watson. He'll be back next week if we let him. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley, on your hometown station, KHTS. Life's real tests are never standardized. The curriculum at Eilid Agua Dulce places self-discovery at the core of every experience, so your learner will be ready to lead in the real world. Our tuition-free charter school is currently enrolling grades TK through nine and expanding to grades 10, 11, and 12 in the coming years, giving your child the perfect opportunity for continuous play-based social-emotional learning. Enroll now so you can enjoy Eilid Agua Dulce's beautiful campus and outdoor classroom for hands-on learning. To learn more about Eilid Agua Dulce and our unique approach to learning, visit eilidaguadulce.org. Eilid Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Hi, I'm Tamara Gurney, president of Mission Valley Bank, Santa Clarita Valley's local community business bank. It's been a challenging 18 months, and as we approach the holidays, our bank is pleased to bring you some holiday music in the hopes of uplifting your spirits and spreading some joy during this season. I'd also like to invite you to visit us at our branch located at 26701 McBean Parkway, across from the town center, to meet our amazing team. And on behalf of our entire Mission Valley Bank team, we wish you a very happy and healthy holiday season. This holiday music is brought to you by Providence Holy Cross Medical Center, your community health partner. To learn more about our award-winning care, call 1-888-HEALING or visit us on the web at providence.org. A Royal Suite Home Furnishings has been family owned and operated in Santa Clarita since 1978. They keep America working by stocking heritage quality furniture made right here in the USA. With high-end design and thousands of fabrics to choose from, A Royal Suite offers a wide selection of furniture at incredibly low prices. Pay 0% interest with your approved credit for 12, 24, 36, or 48 months. See store for details. Visit A Royal Suite's massive showroom on Carl Boyer Drive near Sam's Club in Santa Clarita. Royal Sweet. Sweet dreams. Accidents happen. 
But rest assured, Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California-certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit PattersonsCollisionCenter.com or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. And welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the I- AM side. This is SCVI and I leads Eye on the Valley. I'm Sarah McDaniels together with co-host Renee Marshall. And on the phone right now, we have been talking to you before the break, and we're going to continue the discussion with Wendy Ruiz and Candace Butera, who come to us from Little Eye Leaders and I Create. Thanks so much for sticking around, ladies. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right. So we were talking earlier um, before we had you on about stress with the holidays, what uh, our families can do to kind of get through all of the changes that have been happening. Now, does this does the stress that's happening in the world right now with COVID, do you think that's having an effect on our little ones or do you think it's just normal for them and they're they're fine with it? <laughs> kind of a little of both. Okay. I mean... As we are, as we observe them, yes, there's some stress, but they they don't see things the same way that everyone else sees things. You know, for them, especially because like our learners wear masks, to them it's like no big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They wear the mask. Sometimes they take it off. They put it back on. They're not frustrated or upset by it. <laughs> they, I appreciate you it, saying this, Wendy, because I think there's a misperception. A lot of times, um, you, you know, I'm on many parenting Facebook sites in Santa Clarita. And a lot of times parents will go, my three-year-old absolutely refuses to wear the mask. And I believe personally that that is, in most cases, it's a conditioned response that they've learned from the parent versus I mean, it, a it, kid it, actually it, having a true aversion to the mask. I think once you get right. used to it, you know, they absolutely, because we were nervous too about asking, sure. our, asking our families to do that. We were mm-hmm. very, you know, like, what's going to happen? Are they going to, are parents going to leave our center? Or are they going to, are children going to stress out? And really, we didn't see any of that. Uh, and yes, I mean, are they perfect at wearing them? No. Mm-hmm. Do they, you know, is there a child every once in a while that just says, absolutely not? Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're not crying and upset about it, and we're not going to force them. Good, good. You know, we. It, we do the best we can, but it, they don't. But they're not stressed about it. If that mm-hmm. okay. makes sense, I think that uh, totally makes sense. And I think like Renee brought up this great point about how sometimes our young people carry forward the stress that the adults right. are having. Right? They're little sponges that way. So even if, like you said, it's a little bit of both. Right? Some of our kids are a little stressed out with COVID and and all the changes, but. It could be somewhat that, you know, I mean, we don't have any kids that don't have adults in their life, right? You can't run a school right. without adults. Yeah. We, you know, they've got parents like... and guardians who are stressed out. And, and so I, I wonder if there's been some just emotional shifts or changes with the kiddos that you're seeing that maybe you didn't see two years ago. Even gaps. Any gaps yeah. I'd be curious with too, Wendy. Yeah, but... Let me ask Candace as well. I'm going to put this on speaker so she's yeah. here too. Okay. Okay. Also, one thing, Wendy, just so you know, when I'm referring to gaps, I am not referring to any sort of academic learning loss, that concept. I'm looking more at the concept of social and emotional gaps that we're seeing mm. with the kids. I have some very specific opinions on learning loss. Right. Right. I know you do. I, I do see, like, children now coming in to enroll, like new learners coming in to enroll there is a clear difference in how they are willing to interact. It's taking a lot longer for them to adapt to the classroom environment just because they have not been, you know, around children. Like a lot of families, even pre-school, you know, school will take their children to the park or to the mall jungle climbing structure or whatever. 
And because there's been a lack of that, I have noticed that children coming in, do, they do take a little bit more time to um, understand, you know, that they're in a classroom setting with lots of friends. And right. so, you know, as usual, we always talk about uh, giving them time, you know, and space away. So if they, if learners need an extra few minutes to come, you know, they hang out with us in the office and they play with the poppets. The poppets are the cool I thing love that poppets. these days. Or they do Legos, and they take you know their few minutes to kind of reset, and they go back. Uh -huh. um, we, we're super happy to support that. But generally speaking, I would say it's the bigger impact for us is that the transition into the center and getting right. into a routine yeah. takes a little bit longer. Right, um, and longer than it would have. But before. I think parents know that coming in too. They're they're kind of giving me that information ahead of time as well, um, and it's almost like needless to say at this point, right? Because. Now three-year-olds are coming in who have had two years of COVID, yeah. and before yeah. that were babies. <laughs> so right. um, makes sense. So there's a there's a shift there, and I love that the the parents let you know, and you get to have time to ask your your parents who are, you know, enrolling their children in the program. What's life been like for them? Well, and especially mm -hmm. if they've had a family member. You know, my family we recently had four people that had COVID, including my 87 year old mom. Oh, and so mm. speaking to me today about it is very different. If you would have spoken to me in September as, as I, little eye leaders, I probably would have walked into Candace hysterically crying, going, here's where things are at. I th I'm praying everybody's going to be okay. Everybody's okay now. Oh, but when goodness. you're in it, you don't always know. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious too, Candace, with what you were just talking about, do you think that those children are just being cautious or do you think that they're like apprehensive? Do you know what I mean? Like, is it just like cautious to kind of get into the norms and the um, kind of the routine? Or do you think it's like apprehensive, like an aversion um, to it? Because I was kind of thinking based on what you said, that it was more like just a caution. Oh, oh, yeah, it's, it's just lack of experience with other children. Uh, um, yes. So, they I would say a little bit of a park. They haven't yeah, been they able haven't. to go to play dates. So maybe not even either, just like a lack parties. of exposure. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a lack of exposure. Yeah. Even think about like families with, you know, big families that have, you know, lots of cousins. I've yes. heard from many families that they haven't even seen their extended family or yeah. previously, right? And uh -huh. so now all these children, young children are coming in with like very, very limited amounts of interactions with other children besides their siblings. Well, of course, they're going to have a little bit of apprehension walking into a classroom of, our classrooms are usually about like 16 preschool friends, say. Uh, that could, I, that, that would be overwhelming for me too if right. I've never been amongst um, yeah. many children at the same time. <laughs> Uh, so we just give them that time and space to work through it and, you know, remind them that we're here for them and um, support the families, too. Sometimes the families, the parents need as much support as the, mm. as the learners do, and we yeah. totally understand that. Yep. I can definitely remember my, my little one when he went off to, to preschool. He turned to me and said, bye, Mom, and, like, took off, and I was the one that was crying. <laughs> <laughs> not him. I needed the support. Yeah. So I appreciate that you're giving the, the parents the support. I think we're seeing that too in, you know, even with our older uh, young people, a lot, I mean, as many parents as who couldn't wait for us to get back to normal, there were just as many parents who were like, well, I don't know if I want to send my kid back to school right now. Um, mm -hmm. And especially with the younger ones, mm -hmm. when vaccines were not available. I think all across the country, enrollment in kindergarten dropped by something ridiculous like 30% oh, or, or something massive. insane. So then yeah. now that they're in first grade or second grade, they haven't had those experiences, um, yeah. you know, because parents just felt more comfortable with keeping them home or, you know, perhaps they thought like, what's the point of online kindergarten? Yeah. Right. Well, and also when some people find out that can kindergarten is not mandated by the state of California and it's an option for families, mm. then you suddenly go, oh, wait, I'm in a different boat. It's not like they're in second grade and by law, I have to have them in school or some form of school. Right. It's kind of like an in-between. I had one of my um, uh, friends from high school who's in um, San Francisco at the beginning of the pandemic. She said, hey, my son's supposed to go to kinder next year. What are your thoughts? He's never been to preschool. And I was like, and I said, don't send him. I said, he's on the younger side. I said, why wouldn't you wait? And so we had this whole discussion and he, he, they waited. And so then he got to start this year. The school was open. He got, you know, he's a little bit older. Um, I think when we look at 
a lot of our education systems, we've seen um, some differences in our enrollments and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And things are, you know, things, there's a lot going on. I, I know with the I Lead Homeschool program, everybody in town wants to be involved in it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. They do. They do. Because we have, you know, so many options there uh, for families, as much involvement as you want or as little involvement as you need mm -hmm. from your homeschool EFs. And then, so talk to me about that. Why, why is kindergarten not mandatory? Why aren't they providing, you know, child, because I know that, I mean, this is, this is your wheelhouse, you and Wendy and Candace. It seems vitally important to me that there is education opportunity for our three, four, and five-year-olds before they start school. And it's going to, it doesn't mean you've got to start writing your letters at three years old and all of that. Like, let's make it age appropriate. But why isn't it there? Eventually, over time, we're going to see more opportunities exist for families to have access to early care. A lot mm -hmm. of times, when it came to early care, you either had to have a lot of money or be below like a poverty level, so that way you would qualify for care. People who are like in the middle in terms of their finances, it's very, very hard to afford it. And so we're going to see things change over time. I actually am a proponent of, of not officially making school required until you're six years old. Mm -hmm. I think that's healthy for kids. Um, I'm also a proponent of kind of pushing some of the instruction that we do with children later on as well, because developmentally other countries have shown us that if we wait a bit for reading instruction, kids are stronger readers and stronger students. But for some reason in our society here in America, we believe that three-year-olds should be reading and writing and doing all these things that three-year-olds shouldn't be doing. So, <laughs> and I lead honors where kids are and little I leaders, Wendy and Candace, it's core to the foundation of not just your organization and your schools, but really who you are as educators, you know, in terms of children and helping them feel good and helping them feel whole. You know, what's coming up next for little I leaders and for I lead and SCVI? There's always so much innovation coming out from you guys. Um, it's just inspiring for all of us in the education community. I mean, we're just excited that we get, we're, finally coming back from we feel like we're finally getting out of our pre-covid days mm -hmm. and yeah. enrollment is good and families are returning and the program is strong our i create program is strong our uh it just seems yeah we're just excited that we're moving forward from all of this we are in addition to our you know adding our toddler program we did we are offering some fun like classes for our i create program and just doing everything we can to keep our learners engaged and our families' needs met. Uh, one thing we did do recently, and this was something Candace did as for close to Thanksgiving, is she wanted to thank all of our families for trusting us during mm -hmm. all of this and staying with us and just giving us that, you know, allowing us to, to care for their for their children. And so she provided a breakfast, like a grab-and-go breakfast for them. So when they came in, there was coffee and muffins and oh, and fruit, <laughs> and uh, just as a way of saying, you know, thank you. We we so appreciate and and value our families. Skip the Starbucks drive-through. Let our preschool <laughs> take care of our adults. I right. love that. I love that. All right. If somebody wants to enroll, and you said that you now that you have expanded your your. Um, is it the two year, the two and three year old room, or the uh, infants and toddlers? So you've right. expanded there, so you now have more room. You've got more space, more facilitators uh, being trained for that. How can somebody enroll? The best way is to go on our website, okay, uh, littleileaders.org. Littleileaders.org. I'm going to drop that in the if you are in the car. So it's littleileaders.org is the website. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the comments in the chat on the Facebook Live. So if you're in the car and you can't write that down right now, you can always click on uh, KHTS's uh, Facebook page. Even after the show's over, you can kind of scroll down their page a little bit and find uh, the little uh, video recording from today's yeah. show and find in the, the comments section to learn more about Little Eye Leaders. Wendy and Candace, we're going to have to go to break. I really appreciate you taking the time multitasking. I could hear like joyful squeals and good mornings and hellos in the background. That made me so happy um, to know that you're there with your families. And we appreciate you giving us the time as well. This is Sarah McDaniels together with Renee Marshall filling in for Matt Watson. And you are listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools. Eye on the Valley, your hometown station on KHTS. 
Stay warm with Dunkin' with their fall and winter signature hot lattes and hot chocolate. Holiday Blend Hot Coffee is only $2 through November 30th. And if you like to brew at home, three one-pound bags of Dunkin's Original Blend is only $20. Try some pancake minis or a chicken bacon and cheese croissant stuffer. Order ahead with the Dunkin' app and accumulate points. Located on Bouquet Canyon in the Low Shopping Center and on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country. Both with curbside pickup, Uber Eats, DoorDash, and Grubhub. Or use the drive through at Sierra Highway. Santa Clarita runs on I'm Duncan. Excellence isn't just a word, it is what we deliver. Vanguard Protection Group is committed to providing its clients with the highest echelon of protective services available. Our clients not only receive the security services they contract for, but also reports that are well-written, articulate, and thorough. Our patrol officers operate at the highest levels and have an impressive rapport with local law enforcement. With military, police, private policing, and courtroom experience, you can trust that we have the strength to deliver our promise of excellence. Contact Vanguard Protection by calling 661-753-3611 or visiting their website at vanguardprotectiongroup.com. Com. Welcome to the third annual Carolyn with Gracie Holiday Carolyn event and canned food drive. This is Gracie's dad, Brian Muehlberger. We started this event as a fun way to bring holiday cheer to our Santa Clarita community while also helping collect food for those in need. We do all of this by doing what Gracie loved to do during the holiday season, singing Christmas carols with her friends and family. This event is brought to you in partnership with KHTS Radio, Santa Clarita Grocery, and the Gracie Strong Foundation. We wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. With locations throughout the valley, Providence offers the most advanced technology and therapies for treating cancer in Southern California. Call 1-888-HEALING for your annual checkup or second opinion. The road to healing leads to Providence. It's time to enhance your natural beauty at Hestia Medical Spa. Select from a large menu of services, including an assortment of fillers that can be used in the face, lips, hands, and a variety of other body parts. Get rid of that double chin with Kybella, an injectable treatment to permanently destroy fat cells under the chin. Hestia Medical Spa also offers Botox, Dysport, and Xeomin to help reduce severe frown lines. Experience rejuvenation at Hestia Medical Spa, located on Valencia Boulevard next to City Hall. Call 753-3434 or go online to hestiamedicalspa.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. This is SCVI and I leads I on the Valley today, brought to you by Sarah McDaniels together with Renee Marshall. And our listeners are aware that Matt Watson could not be with us today. He's at an education conference. And so he wasn't, you know, that's the excuse anyway. So he wasn't <laughs> able to be here today. But... We have, anyway, without Matt here, Matt's big brother, Tony, because he is apparently the favorite Watson brother, so I am told. (laughs) And we weren't going to give up having Tony on the show. Welcome for joining us, Big T. Thank you for having me. We're excited that you're here. All right, so you have any fun facts for us today? I do, I do. Um, So we're in the middle of football season, and the Philadelphia Eagles play on the road this week. They're off next week. But they play at home at Veterans Stadium on the 19th and on the 26th, which is noteful because if you're hoping to have a happy holiday, you might want to stay away from Veterans Stadium around the holidays. <laughs> see, there's two fun facts related to the Eagles. Back in 1983, see, currently the Kansas City mascot, the, the Kansas City Chiefs mascot is KC the Wolf. But back in the day, back in the 80s, their mascot was Chief Z. He was a man that actually dressed up in a full Chiefs costume and at Veterans Stadium, he was assaulted twice oh my goodness. in the same game. First, two people ripped his clothes and threw his feathered headrest from the upper deck down to the lower deck. The latter and the much worse happened in the parking lot after the game. Those same two attackers plus two others assaulted Mr. Williams, again, broke his leg, <gasps> and he had to use a wheelchair and crutches for the rest of the year. Oh my Not horrible to do that to a mascot, to do it to anybody, let alone a mascot. 
But then back even further in 1968, the Eagles held its annual Christmas-themed halftime show. Okay. Santa didn't make it because of a snowstorm, so they got a backup St. Nick that was actually seated in the crowd. Well, <laughs> the combination of the weather, the fake Santa, the fact that the Eagles started winning again, so they weren't going to get the first pick in the draft, which was going to be O.J. Simpson, all of this led to Santa being pelted by snowballs by the fans. So, yes, oh my God. the fans <laughs> threw snowballs at Santa Claus. So if you're looking for a happy holiday, stay away from Veterans Stadium. Wow, Eagles fans, man. Holy right? cow. It's always Philadelphia fans, I swear. <laughs> Always, always, in, and they say it's sunny in Philadelphia. Is it? Philadelphia <laughs> yeah. is supposed to be the city of brotherly love? Yeah. Right? And Santa right? snowballs. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, so, my. So who do we have playing this morning, Producer Sarah? So it's going to be myself, Renee, and Patty, Ew. because Patty is intimidated by Andrew <laughs> and would not let me go get Andrew to join us. So, I didn't say perfect. that. Perfect. So, and I don't know so if to I, remind the listeners. I'll let you know right. if the door flies open if Andrew comes running down the hall. Uh, so it's going to be us. So you want to tell our listeners perfect. how it works? Sure. So a little bit of fun trivia, and the way we do it is, your name is your buzzer. So Sarah, Renee, Patty, if you think you know the answer to the question, just state your name, and I'll call on you. However, you <laughs> listeners at home, you don't have to say out your name. You can just answer the question and have a little bit of fun with it. So I've got some trivia that's all over the place this morning. So okay. ready to have some fun? We are ready. We are ready. And I've got the a system set up to keep score. <laughs> Perfect. Because I know so Patty wants mix to know. Red and, when you mix red and blue paint together, what color do you Sarah. Name? I think I got Renee first. I think so, too. Purple. Okay. Purple is correct. <laughs> Thank In you. the nursery rhyme, hey diddle diddle, what ran away with the spoon? Sarah. Sarah. Oh, wait. <laughs> the cow? Was it the cow? No, that's not right. The cow jumped up for the moon. Incorrect. Renee. Oh, right. Anybody else? Renee. I, I think it's the mouse. Incorrect. Patty, you oh, got it? Uh, yeah, uh, the cat took the fiddle, so I'm going to say the cat. The dish ran away with the spoon. The dish oh, ran away with the spoon. Oh, oh. man. All right. You stumped us early. Right. right. What's the tallest mountain in the world? Sarah. Patty. Sarah. Everest. Everest is correct. Dang it. Patty, be ready. One? In the movie Finding Nemo, what is the name of Nemo's father? <laughs> Patty. <laughs> Patty, go ahead. It's Marlin. <laughs> That is correct. Nice uh, of course, you say me. Well, you know, what, it's a Disney question. What, I know. what sport takes place in a velodrome? Sarah. Sarah. That's cycling. Cycling. Good pull. Oh, nice. The Eiffel Tower is in what country? Patty. Patty. Francois. France is correct. <laughs> in the Bible, how many wise men visited baby Jesus? Patty. Gosh, Patty. fast. Three. <laughs> Three is correct. What did they each bring as gifts? Sarah. I have no idea. Sarah. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Perfect. Patty, do you know what myrrh is? I don't think anybody does. No. <laughs> it's a spice, isn't it? It's a spice. Yeah, it is a mm -hmm. spice. What's, what's a herbivore? Patty. Patty. The person who eats uh, plants. Correct, correct. Or an animal that eats plants. Sure, we'll give that. So a quick little fun fact. Patty, did you know that it's impossible to hum while holding your nose? Really? Let me try it. We're all going to try it now. I'm watching him. I'm watching him right now. <laughs> I'm doing it. I did it. I, I know it's. I know it's. It's. It's a bit, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Just to make me do it. I did it. Can you visit Glacier Bay National Park? Wait, what? Sarah. You... Sarah. I'm going Oh, it could, I'm thinking one of two where Glacier Bay National Park is. So I'm got in first. I'm gonna say Alaska. Alaska's correct. I've been there. I wasn't sure if maybe it was Washington State. Okay. It's beautiful. Is it, is it pretty? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It, I've not been there yet. Oh, definitely hit Alaska, everybody. And if you can do the Alaskan cruise, it is mm. spectacular. I think Princess started That's running them again. Yeah. Yes, yes. I, I'm married to somebody Perfect. whose uh, family is uh, from Anchorage, Alaska, so I get the blessing of going there every couple years. It's a fantastic city. Awesome. Oh, lucky yeah. you. Awesome. Cool. Hey, there's 12 buttons on a touchtone phone. What two symbols bear no Renee. digits? Uh, pound sign and the star. I'm not sure. The asterisk. That is correct. I love that you called it a pound sign and not a hashtag. Yeah, I'm 47. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, what's a pound? I was about to say what a of pound sign is. Of course you were, is. Patty. It's, it's a hashtag. Oh, my goodness. Oh. 
How many how many curves are there in a standard paperclip? Um, Renee, four. Renee, I don't know. Incorrect. I'm sorry. Is it Pat? incorrect? Incorrect. Patty, Pat, three. Three is correct. Three. Ooh, Ooh, nice. Patty, I'm two now. I was, yeah. Now I'm like looking for one on the, the lead. Desk. I, that's what I was doing. Right? <laughs> what is Harry Potter's middle name? Patty. <laughs> You know this, and you're going to admit this on radio right now. Of course, I'm a Harry Potter fan. Of course, <laughs> I'm pretty. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's Harry James Potter. James is correct. Nice name named after his father. Yeah. Ah. What popular Christmas beverage is also called milk punch? Sarah. Hey. Sarah. Eggnog. Yep. What is it called? Eggnog's milk punch. Correct. Mm-hmm. Never heard milk that punch. <laughs> milk punch. Hmm. I like it. If if this wasn't a family show, I'd throw out the fun fact that nutmeg can be a hallucinogenic if you eat large quantities of it. Oh my goodness! Oh, really? <laughs> oh my Isn't that gosh. weird? That is <laughs> wild. That's, That's like cool. the best part of it. I don't like rum. What? So, Wouldn't I don't... you think you would vomit mm. before you got a before you started hallucinating? I would think if you, so. Yeah. If you ate that much eggnog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. What's what's a black mamba? Patty. Patty. Well, do you want? All right. It's Kobe Bryant, but if real talk, it's a snake. It's a snake. <laughs> we'll give you that, Patty. I, I knew you had to throw Kobe in there. Of course. What, sports, what, what three sports are involved in a triathlon? Renee. Swimming, Renee. swimming, biking, running. Correct. Nice pull. Name the four months that only have 30 days. Renee, maybe. Renee. <laughs> <laughs> June, November. Oh, crud. April, March. I don't know. You got three out of the four. You got the Sarah. three, so we'll give Thank you a point you. All right, we're going to give... What's the last one? Well, no, no, we're just going to give it to Renee. <laughs> oh, you don't have to. What's the right. right answer? September so has, is fourth, September. The fourth one is September, correct. Yeah. So is April the one that the, doesn't? Which one has... No, April does. April does. Okay. April, September. June, September, and November. So okay. the listeners Excellent. get the correct answer. All right, we In got two minutes. Ice Age, two minutes. In the movie Ice Age, what character... Um, what type of animal is the character Manny? Patty. Patty. It's a ma- <laughs> mammoth? It's a mammoth. Yeah. I, I grew up with that Beautiful. movie, okay? I thought he was going to ask about the character that it has the... It was Ray the, Romano, too. What's the character that has the acorn? Oh, that was a, oh, like a squirrel. Like a, yeah, like a, a squirrel. squirrel. It was a squirrel. <laughs> what is the most common hair color in the world? Sarah? Uh, I think I got Sarah, or Renee, then Sarah. I barely said Renee. Sarah, if you want to take it, it's no. okay. Oh, so, Sarah, go, go for it. I, I was going to say brown. I'm correct. I'm going to say black. Black is correct. Ah, go good. out of the United States, everybody. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? There's more right. than just us. Yeah. Travel a little bit. Yeah. What type of animal is the popular TV character Angelina Ballerina? Um, Renee. She's Renee. a mouse. She's a mouse. I Daddy, actually took a lot of restraint from you, didn't it? All right. Last one. <laughs> last one, Tony. Last one. What's the tallest animal in the world? Sarah. Sarah. Giraffe. Giraffe is correct. Nice. Okay. All right. So, Patty, it Woo! looks like you took us. Woo! Barely. <laughs> Go, Patty. Renee and I were tied at six, and Patty has eight. Congratulations. See, this is why Patty wants us back more often. <laughs> totally. Rather than having Matt. All right, so we're going to bounce. I want to thank all of our guests, Candace Butera, Wendy Ruiz, Adam Laraway. I especially want to thank Renee for coming in and having so much fun with me. Happy to be here. We um, will be back next week with Matt. Join us every Friday, 8 to 10, on your hometown station, KHTS. <laughs>